Do I deal with the petitions first? No. Senator Ludwig. Thank you. I seek leave to move a motion to vary the hours of meeting and routine of business for today. Is leave granted? No. no. Leave's not granted. Just wait, wait a minute. I don't think your microphone's on. No, well, I am speaking up. It's a question no. of whether they turn the microphone up. It was the microphone that was not turned on, in fairness. Minister. Uh, thank you. Pursuant to no. contingent note of standing, is that much better? Standing in the name of Leader of Government in the Senate, Senator Evans, I move that so much of standing orders be suspended as would prevent me moving a motion to provide for the consideration of the matter namely a motion to give precedent to a motion to vary the hours of meeting and routine of business today. In, uh, in speaking uh, to that, uh, the government has uh, signalled its intention for the uh, telecommunications legislation amendment bill uh, to be completed in this week. What we have, we finalised uh, that program, uh, circulated to the chamber, indicated that it was essential uh, to have this uh, bill dealt with in this week. Having now uh, uh, had a number of hours for second reading debate to be had on the bill and committee stage as well uh, to be had on the bill, it is time to ensure that we do complete the bill before we rise uh, uh, this evening or, as the case may be, uh, if people do require additional hours, then at least by the end of the week. Uh, in doing, uh, in Ensuring that that does happen, it is necessary to ensure that we do uh, put uh, additional hours in the program to allow that to occur. In addition, there are significant amendments that need to be progressed. Uh, we're currently in committee stage in relation to that bill. In dealing with the committee stage, it will be necessary, if any amendments are passed uh, here, that they then go over to the House for the House to deal with those amendments. If there are any uh, messages uh, returned, then the Senate will, need deal, will then need to deal with those. So, in giving uh, this uh, motion precedent, we then uh, seek uh, the uh, support of the Senate to ensure that we can finalise uh, this by that time. Uh, we have, if you look at the program over the last uh, 12 months, the government has uh, been endeavouring to gain the cooperation of the opposition to ensure that we can get our legislative program dealt with in a reasonable way. Can I say that the opposition uh, have, uh, if I use the phrase, not been completely uh, reasonable in ensuring the government has sufficient time to deal with the legislative program? If you look at uh, two indicia, which gives an opportunity to highlight this, one is uh, that uh, the government business uh, for the year to date runs at about 40 per cent of Senate time. It usually runs at about 50 per cent. Therefore, there has been, therefore, there has been about 10 per cent less, 10 per cent less government, government time to allow legislation to be dealt with. The second indicia is that the opposition, having increased the number of urgency motions and matters of public importance from something in the order of seven percent to 15 percent to 38 percent, uh, which then means that the amount of available time for the Senate has significantly reduced. Uh, we all know that at the end of the session uh, that it is not unusual to seek additional hours to ensure that we can uh, deal with the legislative program. Uh, in this instance, uh, there is but one bill uh, that we are now uh, pursuing with vigour to ensure that we do finalise the legislative program of the government. The opposition have indicated uh, clearly that they are not supportive of this approach. Uh, therefore, the only uh, recourse uh, the government has is to ensure that we can proceed with this in the way uh, that I am now seeking uh, the support of the Senate for. Uh, to be able to achieve that, uh, we do need uh, the support of the miners and the independents to be able to pursue this. It would be much better to have had the opposition uh, arrange, uh, like we have done in the past, uh, time to allow a full debate uh, and the debate to be continued. In respect of this, the opposition have indicated time and time again that they do not want to debate this bill. They are then seeking to frustrate the ability of the government to finalise this legislative program and frustrate the ability of 
the government to finish this bill. Uh, the opposition, of course, have that right. Uh, the government also has the right to be able to pursue its legislation as, it, as outlined. Se Se Senator Roberts. If I may, uh, just clarification. We are debating, as I understand it, motion number four on today's notice paper. Is that no. correct? No, we're not. No, not. Sorry, as I understand it, we're not. Um, leave was leave was leave was sought. Leave was. We are we are debating a suspension of standing orders, as I understand it, and I did not take it uh, from what I'd heard. So, yeah, all right, Senator Senator Betts. Thank you for that clarification. At the outset, let me say this opposition has been one of the most cooperative oppositions in the history of this Senate. We have helped and assisted this government, and for this government to claim that only 40 per cent of the Senate's time has been taken with government legislation is for one simple reason. They had no legislation to put before us. That's the reason why. They introduced the Afghanistan motion, they introduced all sorts and manner of things, and were more than happy for private members to be given time to discuss and ventilate issues because they had and still don't have a genuine agenda to prosecute in this chamber. Until 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 now Senator until Carr. now. Now, Mr uh, President. We had the unseemly performance of the Deputy Leader of the Opposition last night on national TV, fresh from his debacle about the NBN not being mentioned in the legislation that is before us, being wrong not once but twice but 62 times in relation to that. He then goes on national TV last night to tell us that there are some arcane practices in the Senate which is delaying process of his legislation. You know what that arcane practice is? That there are still some senators gutsy enough to crease the back of the legislation, to crease the spine of the explanatory memorandum and actually read it. Because if the minister would have done that, he would not have made that monumental error that Senator Joyce so ably exposed on national TV. Also, the assertion was made that this legislation has been on the notice paper since June 2009, in, in fact, the 15th of June 2009. That is just completely and utterly incorrect, and it goes to show the misinformation that Labor continually peddles and is unfortunately regurgitated by friendly elements in the media. The simple fact is this government did not do a deal with Telstra in relation to these matters until the 20th of June this year, and they then only presented the new legislation, significantly different to that which was tabled on the 15th of September 2009. They tabled that on the 20th of October, and we have only had five days that it's actually been on the notice paper. A piece of legislation which will be the first step in implementing a $43,000 million infrastructure project. And, and Senator Macdonald corrects me, each time we look at it, it goes up. And that is why it is so vitally important that this legislation not be rushed. I simply remind the Greens and the miners in this place that they, in their rush to assist the government, in relation to the so-called stimulus package, they share the responsibility of the house fires in the pink bat debacle. They share the responsibility of the building education revolution debacle. They share the responsibility of the green loan scandal, and they will share the responsibility of this huge burden at over $2,000 per man, woman, and child being placed on the shoulders of not only this generation but the next generation as well. And that is why we say it is wise for us not to proceed in this hasty manner, in an inappropriate, indecent hasty manner, because they should have learnt the lesson of pink bats, BER, green loans, and the list goes on. 
but no, they're willing to airbrush all that from their memory and say, look, sure we've mucked up three, four times, let's do it again, let's do it again, but with a lot bigger sum of money, 43 or indeed $50,000 million. And can I say, Mr President, the business plan, the summary that we were given, that will be ventilated, can I say, in an extensive manner, uh, by the coalition at least. And I say to my friend Senator Xenophon, who put out a press release, government agrees to publicly release full NBN summary. That's like saying I've got a full half glass of water. With great respect, this is accepting and adopting government spin, which is not good enough when you're dealing with a $43 or $50,000 million project. As a result, Mr President, we will be opposing the motion. Se uh, Senator Bob Brown. Well, that's extraordinary, isn't it, uh, President? The, uh, we have uh, poor Senator Abetz uh, moving to oppose a motion for a uh, debate on sitting hours that he hasn't seen. I mean, uh, but it's not too uh, unusual for Senator Abetz to be opposing things he doesn't understand. The, uh, we have, uh, and what's more, uh, President, you might note that we have uh, bleating from his seat, uh, the even poorer Senator Macdonald, who um, is uh, equally ignorant of what the motion uh, that uh, the leader wants to put is. Now, Senator Abetz said last night, he's mentioned Christmas, that uh, there should be more sitting hours. And I am in the mood that we should sit till Christmas if necessary, and uh, I'm looking forward to the opposition is going to get called on this, and uh, they might be changing a few pre-Christmas events, so that uh, we—that's good, that's excellent—and um, we uh, are in the spirit of uh, giving ourselves more time here. So, uh, uh, and poor Senator Macdonald's gagging, he says. Well. Uh, that's up to him, but uh, there should be time for the uh, for the uh, debate on this. We should be enlightened by what the motion is, acting uh, president, and uh, we uh, will be supporting this motion so that, in the common sense way of the Senate, uh, it can be uh, looked at uh, and properly dealt with. Uh, the uh, Opposition seems to have left the chamber. Um, so much for attention to detail on this Friday morning. There are uh, all missing now except for the obligatory two. So much attention uh, to this important matter. But uh, I look forward to seeing what the government has to put before us. Uh, we support this motion and uh, we will support a full debate on it if necessary so that everybody can come to a proper arrangement for us to sit here today and I presume tomorrow uh, so that uh, we can send, deal. Senator Bob Brown. Senator Bob Brown. Senator Fife Mr President, I draw your attention to the uh, state of the chamber. Quor quorum, quorum not present. Ring the bells. Quorum is not present. Senator you can't leave when a quorum is being called.
Quorum present, send the Bob Brown. You're in order to continue. So, um, the uh, opposition, having vacated the House, then calls for a quorum. And that's, uh, as you'll know, President, about uh, as irresponsible an action as uh, you can see an opposition taking at this stage of the game. I presume we'll have more quorums called during the day because uh, they are absent in the House and unable to take uh, properly part in the debate. But uh, that's fine too. As I say, they should get ready to sit through till Christmas if we need to, because I'm quite happy to. Um, I uh, support the suspension that's inherent in this motion. The question is, Senator Fifield. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, I've got to admit um, I, I never bought uh, the new paradigm. Um, I always suspected that this parliament uh, would uh, resemble far, far too closely uh, the previous parliament. Um, when there's, uh, there's talk of uh, new paradigms, uh, uh, new political culture, new way of operating, um, uh, you'll forgive me if I'm a little cynical. And we saw uh, the first uh, uh, episode of that last night when uh, Senator Brown uh, sought to gag debate in this place. Uh, and, uh, se se Senator Carr, it will assist if you don't and interject. Senator, and Sen Senator Conroy um, had to step in uh, after Senator Brown um, bungled uh, procedurally. Um, clearly, uh, Senator Conroy uh, didn't get the memo on the front page of the Australian newspaper uh, from Mr Swan yesterday, which was to steer clear of the Greens. Um, uh, the Labor Party and the Greens uh, are in this place in an alliance. Uh, it's an alliance uh, against accountability. It's an alliance uh, against transparency. Uh, and that's what we saw. That's what we saw. That's what we saw. That's what we saw last night. And we're seeing uh, another instalment of that today, uh, with Senator Ludwig uh, seeking to suspend standing orders uh, to. Uh, introduce a motion uh, to uh, vary the order of business today. Now, there's a well-established uh, pattern of business in this place, uh, well-established, uh, and it's the government's obligation to manage their program within that established uh, program, uh, which the government has failed to do. Um, putting alongside that, uh, Mr President, uh, we on this side of the chamber um, are not prepared to be party uh, to any rush of consideration uh, of the telecommunications legislation which uh, has taken up uh, part of this week. Uh, that legislation actually has not received significant scrutiny. Um, it's not for any lack of trying on this side of the chamber. Uh, it's because we have been denied, the parliament has been denied, the Australian people have been denied basic information which you need when assessing something of this magnitude, when assessing a $42 or $43 billion government program. We wanted the business case. That has been denied. Uh, we have been given some short, abridged uh, version of it. Uh, that is not adequate. That is not sufficient. We have argued time and again that something of this magnitude should go to the Productivity Commission. Yeah. Now, even, even the $16 billion Building the Education Revolution program, uh, even that at least gets the scrutiny of the hapless Mr. Orville, of the hapless Mr. Orville. Um, even that program gets a modicum of objective assessment. But for something of $42 billion, this government seeks to deny even the most basic elementary scrutiny. So, Mr President, uh, we are not minded to, uh, and we won't uh, be supporting uh, the suspension of standing orders to consider a motion to vary the hours in this place, because, 
which is still being written as we speak, as uh, Senator Vets points out, because this legislation does deserve proper scrutiny. Uh, in my own portfolio of disabilities, just a concept. Uh, it's a good concept, but just a concept of a national disability insurance scheme, uh, which probably goes to um, a dollar figure of uh, three to five billion dollars. Even that is having the examination of a productivity commission, even before it's come into existence, just as a concept. So, Mr. President, in my time here, I have never seen uh, such a denial of scrutiny, uh, such a uh, denial of accountability. Um, we had the farce uh, last night of Senator Conroy on the TV referring to the processes of this place, of this chamber, the chamber of which he is a member, as arcane. But there is nothing arcane. There is nothing arcane about good old-fashioned scrutiny. There is nothing arcane about having sunlight, uh, having a spotlight put upon government legislation. We heard a lot about Operation Sunlight. Uh, can colleagues would remember Operation Sunlight. It sounded like a North Korean concept, but we gave it the benefit of the doubt um, that this government was going to be better than previous governments, do better. Uh, they've failed, and uh, we won't be supporting Senator this. Fifield, your time. Senator Xenophon. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, I think we know it's going to be a momentous day in the Senate when uh, Annabel Crabb graces us uh, in the press gallery. We know something big is happening. Um, <laughs> uh, can, can, we, <laughs> can I indicate that I, I will be supporting the suspension? Just address your remarks to the chair. Uh, ignore other distractions. As always, Mr. President. As always, Mr. President. Can I indicate that I will be supporting the suspension of standing orders? This is an important. Well, well, Senator Macdonald, who I have a lot of time for, says shame. Uh, but these these allow these allow, <laughs> no these allow for uh, debate to continue through tonight. They allow for debate tomorrow for the committee stages. I think inadequate consideration. Okay. Well, they're all. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I don't, somehow, somehow. I think we should. I think, Mr. President. Senator Xenophon, just continue. Ignore the interjections and just address your chair, remarks to the chair. Uh, I don't have a problem. Senator Xenophon, ignore the interjections. Those on my left cease interjecting. Senator Xenophon. I think it's important, Mr. President, that we have adequate time to debate this very important piece of legislation. We know that there is there are time constraints. We know that there is an issue here that if uh, the structural separation of Telstra, I believe, uh, is in the interest of consumers, that it's not sustainable to have such a vertically inter integrated telecommunications network as we have in this country, when the OECD acknowledges how constrained we are because uh, of the vertical integration of Telstra. Uh, Senate, uh, Mr President, I'm always courteous to Senator Betts. I listen to him in silence, and perhaps he could uh, give me the same courtesy. I think that there are some compelling reasons that we need to deal with this legislation now. We saw what happened at the Telstra board meeting last Friday. If the deal falls over between Telstra and the government and the NBN, then we will lose a golden opportunity to structurally separate Telstra and, with it, uh, benefits to consumers in the longer term. Uh, there will be another opportunity to deal with the NBN legislation, but I think it's important that we have adequate scrutiny for this piece of legislation. Uh, and I, what I said to the media this morning, what I said last night, is that uh, if we need to sit on Friday to deal with this, then so be it. But I support the suspension of standing orders because, well, um, I, uh, um, I think that uh, I know the thought of spending the weekend with Senator McDonald is a very alluring one, but uh, I'm not sure that that will be necessary. Um, I support the suspension of standing orders, Mr. President. Senator Joyce, uh, w w w just one minute. Senator Joyce, just resume your seat because Senator Abetz wishes to take a point of point of order. Senator uh, Abetz. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I wonder how the Senate can be debating a motion to suspend standing orders to consider 
a motion that has not been drafted, has not been circulated, that we don't know what its contents is. And, uh, well, that's not a point of order. I, there's no point of order there. It's, it's, uh, no. Senator Ludwig. It's not unusual to read out the motion. When we come to that, I will read it out. Senator Joyce. Uh, uh, Senator Joyce. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Um, it, it seems it, it becomes strange by the moment, doesn't it? It does with you. We, um, and we've just heard Bob Brown interjecting. You refer to people have, by uh, Sen have, Senator Joyce. You refer to people by their correct title. Thank you, uh, Bob Brown. <laughs> Senator Dr. Bob Brown. That's much better. <laughs> and, it's so, and it so appears that we are now apparently. Um, Suspending standing orders for a motion that we don't know, we don't know about. But apparently, it's supposed to come to us by divine, divine inspiration. But it appears everybody else seems to, everybody else seems to know about it. Everybody else seems to know about it. It would be interesting, since they know about it, for them to read this motion out onto the Hansard, since they know about it. Otherwise, this is another form of that caucusing caucusing so as to remove the right of this chamber, its proper and open transparency in the delivery of facts that are so pertinent to this actual piece of legislation. You cannot, and, and now we have the Greens in unison with this. We now have the Greens that, that want to deliver gags. We have a statement by Senator Brown already that he's prepared to sit here till Christmas. Well, so am I, Senator Brown. And the moment you move a gag, you make yourself a complete and utter hypocrite. A complete and utter hypocrite. Uh, a complete Senator, and utter Senator, hypocrite. Senator Joyce, you need to withdraw that. I withdraw that he is a complete and utter hypocrite. Uh, maybe just no, no, no. We're not. We're not going to play around. You need to withdraw. That he. I withdraw. No, you just. I withdraw. Withdraw. Thank withdraw. you. So, so, so we are now. We now have the. If if Senator Brown is good for his word. Then he will not move today for a gag because he is prepared to sit here till Christmas, as are we. As are we. So now we will now we will see and test his mettle. We will test his mettle and test his word. We will test his word today to see what he does. We will be able to determine from that whether the whether the metaphor of, Do of, of Senator Dr. Bob Brown is as good in his word on this issue as it is, will be on everything else. Or is it one thing? Or is it one thing for one group and one thing for somebody else? Is it narrow casting, Senator Dr. Bob Brown? Robert. Yeah, so Robert. Robert. And why? Why is this such an issue? Because this, we apparently have this complete change in process of where we are in, on this piece of legislation because of this, because of this. And then, and, and we can go through this. The funding is this amazing. NBN's funding requirement is driven by the company's earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortisation (EBITDA). Well, that's remarkable. And capex profiles, including working capital. Full stop. Uh, if you just if you if you just went with the acronym, you could put it almost in a line for 27.1 billion dollars for 27.1 billion dollars of borrowing. That's what we're going to get. And if you think we might actually be going to borrow more, because in the next line we talk about their equity requirements. The equity requirements. This is based on advice from Goldman Sachs that NBN Co should be able to arrange debt funding. Full stop. Full stop. That's it. Senator That's it. That's Doug where it stops. Cameron. That's where it stops. Senator this Cameron. Is a, this is motherhood statements. This is this is a year nine economics, and this is a cover up. This is a cover-up. This is a total and utter cover-up. And our job in this place is to ventilate this issue for the Australian people. Now, it will be interesting today to see who actually has a genuine desire for the ventilation of this issue, because I think the people who have to pay this money back have that right. I think the people who have to pay this money back have that right. Um, but already, the first thing, the first thing that the Labor Party done, and they've been up here talking to Dr. Robert Brown, Senator of Australia. Senator of Tasmania, and they've been going back and they're organising times and they're saying when they think that we should be out of here by. It's all a setup. 
The Australian people are being set up. The Australian people are, being, are having a snow job done on them. But they're done on it. It's, it's all right if you don't pretend to be pure as a driven snow. But they do. They do. But they're all, but they're all they part be. of this. They're part of this process, and they're going to do you over today, Australia. They are going to do you over. They're going to let you down. They're going to hide. They're going to prevaricate, and they're going to guillotine. They are not good for their word, these, this crowd. They are not good for their word. They are not transparent. They are not the arbiters of light. There is no light in this. This is all tenure. That's all we're getting in this show. There is no light in this place. This is, this is what we get. And so we will have. We will see. We're, and you know, it's going, to, Senate, it's going to be. Senator, Senator Cameron. <laughs> Senator, Sen Cameron. Senator Joyce. Yes. You've Thank got you very 14 much. Seconds so, remaining. And, and, and all these. If you want to know what's. In aim. Look at this. Look at the, look at the rubbish that you've got in this. To, to know that we're about to spend this money so I can get on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> what a relief. I, so I can download movies quicker. That's why my nation should go into this much debt. Time, time has expired. Time. Uh, I just. Order. I do, do advise the next speaker that there's a 30 minute time limit on this debate, which means that there's probably two minutes left in the debate. Senator Macdonald. Have I got the call? Yes, you've yeah, got the call. The, the, I'm just advising you Thank you, you the Mr time. President. I, I was well aware of that. Uh, but I just wanted to use my couple of minutes to emphasise what I heard both Senator Dr Robert James Brown and Senator Xenophon say in this debate, and that is both of them said that they want a full and open debate on the NBN proposal. Now, there are a hell of a lot of uh, amendments to be dealt with, uh, and they need to be properly scrutinised. So I, have, I again emphasise to the parliament that both Senator Brown and Senator Xenophon have guaranteed a full, open and accountable debate, which means, Mr President, that neither of them will be moving the gag motion, and neither of them nor their parties and followers will be supporting the, the, uh, the gag debate any time during the uh, debate on the NBN. So I just want to emphasise that. Thank you, Senator Brown. Thank you, Senator Xenophon, for indicating there would be a full and open debate, which means you will not be moving and not supporting a gag motion. Now, the Greens, since time immemorial, have railed against the imposition of gags. I'm sure they won't change their mind. Otherwise, Senator Brown would be called a hypocrite. Uh, uh, if, no, no, I didn't say he was a hypocrite. I said if he voted for it, he would be a hypocrite because he's spoken so long, spoken so long about not not supporting gags. So, Mr. Uh, President, should should it be the case that uh, Senator Brown uh, did change his mind, did say did prove what he just said now to be a complete lie, a complete lie. Uh, if that were to happen, it would show that Senator Brown would be displaying his absolute and unmitigated hypocrisy. So I look forward Time to them has joining expired. with us. Time has expired for the debate. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells.
Lock, lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair. The nose to the left of the chair. Point Senator McEwen, teller for the ayes. Senator Parry, teller for the nose. Order. There being 34 ayes, 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Okay. Just one minute, Senator Betts. Just wait. Wait. I, I think, I think that that doesn't help the debate. I think that should be withdrawn. <laughs> sen, sen, Senator. It might just help if you withdraw that comment. <coughs> wait a, wait a minute. Um, Senator Ludwig, I'm waiting to call Senator Abetz, who has a point of order. Senator Abetz. Thank you, Mr. The President. Mr. President, I was wondering if you could explain uh, to us, for absolute clarity, the motion that has now been circulated <coughs> in paragraph 3 says that the telecommunication legislation be called on immediately and have precedence over all other business, does that mean that question time today will not take place? Well, Senator, there's no point of order in the sense that the motion hasn't been moved, and it's not my job as the presiding office to explain the motion. It's a matter for the debate of the chamber, and, and I'll leave it to the debate of the chamber. Senator Ludwig. I move that a motion to vary the hours of meeting and routine. Oh. Senator Macdonald. The most serious uh, point of order to raise, and, uh, and, and I, I have some hesitation in doing it because I don't like uh, pointing the finger at my colleagues. But two of our colleagues have just said they would not curtail debate. This just, motion just, just, that they've just, indicated. Wait a minute, they, Senator Macdonald. Uh, I'm, I've got, I've got an exchange across the chamber here and I'm trying to listen to you. Th Senator this Macdonald. motion, which they both indicated they will support, clearly indicates they will curtail the bait. So I point out to you, Mr President, that both senators have deliberately misled this, this House no, and that should be dealt with by you accordingly. Not, not a point of order. Sen Senator Ludwig. I move that a motion to vary the hours of meeting and routine of business may be moved immediately and have precedent over all other business today until determined, and I move that the question be now put. Question, question is that the question be now put. The question is that the question be now put. The, the question is, the question is, what, it's, it's a, 
It's a procedural motion. The question, the question is that the question. Just, just wait, wait, wait a minute, Senator Betts. Look, Senator Bob Brown, you, you may resume your seat because I'm listening to Senator Betts, but I can't listen to Senator, Senator Betts. Just wait a minute, Senator. You are entitled to be heard in silence. On both sides. This does not help the process that's going on in this chamber this morning. When I'm trying to, Senator Betts. I won't pursue the point of order, Mr. Right. President. Senator Bob Brown. Clark, read the motion. Clark, that's. The question is that the question be now put. That that it be given precedent. Sorry, the the question. I'm. I'm I'm giving the shorthand version. The question is that the uh, motion be given precedence and that the question be now put. That is the, that is the issue that's before the chair at this moment. The question, that is the question. question. The question is the, the motion. Yes, I know that. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. The ayes have it. No. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is, so everyone is under order. The question is that the motion be put. Those of that opinion will. The question is that's. No, no. The question is that the motion be put. The, the original question that was before the. If you listen, I'll explain. The original question that was before the chair was giving of precedence and that the motion be put. We are considering the procedural part, which is the motion be put. And I'm just making that clear so that everyone understands what is before the chair. The question is that the motion be put. Those, those of that opinion will move to the. Uh, the eyes will move to the right of the chair, the nose to the left of the chair. And I point Senator McEwen teller for the eyes, Senator Parry teller for the nose. Thirty-four eyes, thirty-two noes. The matter is resolved in the affirmative. Shame. The question now is that the ghost. Just the question now is in respect of the giving of precedence. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. The ayes have it. No. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. I point Senator McEwen teller for the ayes. Senator Ludwig teller for uh, Senator Ludwig. Senator Parry teller for the noes.
Order. There being 34 ayes, 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Senator Ludwig. Uh, thank you. Uh, I move that one on Thursday, the 25th of November 2010, the hours of meeting shall be 9:30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 7:30 p.m. to 10 p.m. To the Senate meet on Friday, the 26th of November 2010, and that the hours of meeting shall be 9 a.m. to 3:30 p.m. Three, the Telecommunications Legislation Amendment, Competition and Consumer Safeguard Bill 2010, be called on immediately and have precedent over all other business until determined, except at 2 p.m. on Thursday, the 25th of November 2010. Questions without notice shall be asked for one hour. Four, the Telecommunications Legislation Amendment, Competition and Consumer Safeguard Bill 2010, shall be considered under a limitation of debate. Five, the time allocated for the remaining stages of the bill shall be as follows. A, Committee of the Whole till 11.45 a.m. on Friday, the 26th of November 2010. B, all remaining stages till 12 noon on Friday, 26th of November 2010. And C, this order operates as an allocation of time under Standing Order 142. Uh, six, at the, at the conclusion of the consideration of business listed in paragraph three, the order of business B, A, Tabling of a report under the selection of bills committee. B. The consideration of the following government business notice of motion. Number one, Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Jobs and Workplace Relations, Senator Evans. Introduction of the National Vocational Education and Training Regulatory Bill, uh, 2010. Uh, two, two, Minister for Tertiary. You can read. Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Jobs and Workplace Relations, Senator Evans. Introduction of the national. Point of, point of order. Senator Betts. The uh, minister is purportedly reading a motion to the Senate, uh, which has been circulated, and there is now a discrepancy between that which he read and that which is printed. And I would seek clarification as to what the wording ought to be. Um, so, so, Senator, I, I have I have no idea of what the correct uh, title is. I. I will, get, I will get the minister to clarify that. So for tertiary education, skills, jobs and workplace relations, Senator Evans, in reduction of the national what? vocational. Senator, Evan, uh, Senator uh, Abetz. I did seek clarification in relation to motion number one. No, you said number two. You said number two, and I raised the point of order in relation to number one. So All if right. we can have clarification not, on number one, I, I, that would be helpful. I'm sure, I'm sure that the minister will clarify that. The, so wait, wait a minute, Senator Cormann. Uh, a po point of order, Mr. President. Uh, the motion that the minister is reading out is at variance with the motion that I have got in front of me. Uh, I'm totally confused as to what the government is actually proposing well, uh, to do this morning. Can, Senator, can you please be asked to provide Senator, some clarification? It is, Sen Senator, it is well. It is within the standing orders and correct within the standing orders for the motion to be read if there is a difference between what has been circulated and what the minister is reading. I can only take that what the minister is reading is the true and proper version. That, that's, that's, I think, and I think that is the correct way. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, Senator, Senator, Senator Ludwig, just resume your seat. I've got uh, Senator Macdonald on his feet. Senator Macdonald. Mr President, we just voted previously on two motions to immediately put a motion. And the motion that we were circularised that would be being put was not the one he's reading out, but the one that is on our desk. Now the previous two motions that have been voted upon that have been voted upon related to the document that was on our tables when he moved it. And so those two motions do not take account well, let me finish, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Please, Mr. President. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me develop my argument, uh, my point of order. Not argument, my point of order. The, the, the two previous motions related to a document on our table, and so we voted accordingly. Perhaps if we'd known it was this, we might have voted a different way. And so, Mr. President, I think those previous two motions are invalid. And, uh, and do not apply to the motion before no, the table. No, uh, on the point, no, Senator Bob Brown was on his feet before yourself. Uh, Senator Bob Brown, the uh, quite 
quite clearly, and it's always been the, the, uh, the fact, that a motion read is the motion that we're dealing with. A motion circulated uh, may be at variance, but I, I would ask you, President, I would ask you, President, if the so, Senator Brown, this is not a order. This is not a time for debate. There's, there's not a time. If you finish the point of order, you, if the attendants might circulate to the opposition a pencil each, so that they can get it oh, right. Senator as Senator Brown, the, the that, motion that is, read out. Sen Senator Brandis. Just wait a minute, Senator Brandis. Senator, wait a minute. Whenever, when everyone is ready, we'll proceed. Senator Brandis. Um, Mr. President, on Senator Macdonald's point of order, the motion for which the Senate just voted was a motion that the motion be put, not that a motion be put in relation to precedence, but that the motion be put. The only motion before the Senate at the time that motion was put and determined was not the motion which Senator Ludwig is now reading. The motion that Senator Ludwig it's is right. now reading is not the motion that the Senate gave leave to put. He is out of order and you should sit him down. Sen Senator Brandis, that is a completely wrong construction on that. The motion the, the motion was simply a motion seeking precedence. It didn't stipulate the motion. Just, it didn't stipulate the motion. It was a matter of precedence, and and that the motion be put that would allow precedence to take place. That's what the motion was, and that is quite within order. Sent. I'll ask. Um, sen sen Senator, M just just wait a minute, Senator Senator Macdonald. Act of uh, Minister Carr impugning pro improper uh, sen motives Senate, and threatening uh, Senator, Ma you Senator Macdonald. That he apologise and withdraw. There is so much shouting going across this chamber. I am not able to hear. There is no point of order on what you've raised. No. I move that the Senate take note of your ruling. Is leave given? No. I move that so much as standing orders be suspended as will prevent me from moving that the Senate take note of your ruling for me. Senator Brandis. Mr President, without reflecting on your ruling, which I do not do, the, rea the fact is that the motion upon which the Senate lately deliberated was a motion that the motion be put. The motion that was before the motion, the motion that was before the chamber at the time that motion was deliberated upon, was not the motion that Senator Ludwig is now reading. And we and we know and we know what it what this is all about, because in the original motion, the only motion that was before the chamber at the time the question was put, was a motion, a guillotine motion which would have included, among other things, to eliminate question time. And plainly the government, embarrassed by the revelation that that motion would have eliminated question time, sought late in the piece to change the motion to reinstate question time. But you know, Mr President, and every senator present in this chamber is well aware that the government's original plan was to eliminate question time. Now, Mr. President, Mr. President, everyone accepts that both sides of this chamber, when in government, have on occasions moved the guillotine, moved the gag, and that charge has been levelled against us in interjections from the government benches. And it's true. During the Howard government, we moved the guillotine on a number of occasions. But never, Mr. President, Never, and I think you will find, in, if you look at the precedent books, not once 
in the history of the Australian Senate has a guillotine motion eliminated question time. This is a new depth in parliamentary practice which has been imposed by this government with the willing connivance of the Greens, yeah, yeah, whose yeah, yeah. heroic talk about parliamentary scrutiny and the role of the Senate and transparency in government is revealed for the fraud, the fraud it is. And I'm sorry to say, with the connivance and support of Senator Xenophon and Senator Fielding as well, who perhaps, to give them the benefit of the doubt, may have been lulled into believing, into, into not appreciating that the motion before the chamber at the time was to eliminate question time. So let the record show, Mr. President, let the record show that today, the 25th of November 2010, for the first time in the history of this Senate, an Australian government, in moving the guillotine, sought to eliminate question time. How can anyone, how can any Labor senator, how can any Green senator ever again, without obvious hypocrisy, talk about openness in government, parliamentary scrutiny, transparency. Now, Mr. Now, Mr. President, if, it, if it's possible that it could be worse than that, it is, because we know that this was a preordained plan. Senator Conroy, the stupidest person in this place, gave it away yesterday. He gave it away— so you can't— I, you, I withdraw. You, thank I withdraw. You. Gave it away. There's great competition. There's great competition. Senator Conroy gave— Gave the game away yesterday when at the end, when at the end of question time he merrily waved across to the opposition benches and said, Happy Christmas, see you next year. So Senator Conroy well knew that the, the, he was in on the fix. He well knew that there would be no question time on Thursday, today, Thursday. That is why at the end of question time yesterday, it caused some of us to be a little curious, I might say, as to why Senator Conroy would, would anticipate that he wouldn't be here to answer questions the next day. The reason was because the government had already decided as, as, as early as question time yesterday that yesterday's question time would be the last question time of the year. Now, we can understand why this government would want to protect from scrutiny a struggling, weak and failing minister in yeah. Senator Stephen Conroy, a man overboard indeed, Senator, Senator Johnston. But to stoop to a new low in Australian parliamentary democracy, to actually vote to suspend the standing orders so that could, there could be no question time, and reasonably expecting that the question time would be largely directed to the minister, the weak, struggling, failing, hopeless, flailing minister they were trying to protect, is unprecedented. Now, Mr. President, the ruling you have given, which, while I don't reflect upon it, was was a was was a ruling in relation to a motion that the question be put. The question that is the, the only question this Senate has decided is that the motion eliminated Time has expired. Senator Ludwig. Move that the question now be put. The question is that the question now be put. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. The ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells. Four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be put. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair. The noes to the left of the chair. I point Senator McEwen, teller for the ayes, and Senator Adams, teller for the noes. Order. There being 34 ayes, 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Point of order, Senator Brown. Moving my motion. Senator Ludwig moved a motion that the motion be put. I'm moving my motion to, to suspend standing orders. I, I, now, I now put the. Close. We'll now vote on it. My motion to suspend standing orders. Yes. Okay. Yes. The question now is that the motion moved by Senator Brandis be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Aye. Against say no. Aye. Noes have it. Aye. Division required. Division required? Ring the bells. Four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Brandis be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left of the chair. I point Senator Adams, tell her for the ayes. Senator McEwen, tell her for the nose. Order. There being 32 ayes, 34 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Senator Ludwig. Thank you. Uh, the remaining terms of the motion have been circulated, uh, headed revised. The correct terms uh, of the motion is that which have been circulated, headed revised. I now move that the question be put. Well, the, the, Sen, Senator Cormann. Uh, on, on a point of order, uh, Mr. President. Uh, it is still unclear what motion uh, is actually before the Senate at present because there's two different motions uh, floating around. The uh, sen 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 Senator Cormann, Senator Cormann, I, I, I understand from uh, side comments that I hear that the motion is headed revised. Uh, uh, Send, Senator Cormann, that's, uh, I'm just, all I can do is give you the information. I can't uh, enter into the debate. Th thank you, Mr. President. I seek leave to take note of your, uh, the information that you've just provided to the Senate. No. I, I, I give information. You... Mr. President, I seek to take note of your ruling. It's not a ruling. Well, you've just said no. Oh, Senator Brandis. It is a ruling, whether it's described as such or not, because Senator Cormann raised a point of order. You have disposed of his point of order with the remarks you've just made. That is a ruling, whether described as such or not. Sen Senator Evans. As the opposition well know, they queried, they queried the resolution being put. Senator Ludwig uh, uh, explained across the chamber and the President uh, uh, formally uh, advised the Chamber of that information so as to answer Senator Cormann's query. 
Uh, there's no point of order uh, on this uh, point raised by Senator Brandis. The chamber is aware of the resolution that's been put and ought to be put. Well, Senator Brandis, I can't help you keep up if you're not prepared to keep up. You change it every 12 minutes. There's two things we said. Well, I, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no point of order. The question, the question. We're in the middle of another motion that is before the chair, and that is that the motion be put. Senator Fifield. Point of order, uh, Mr. President. Um, th there is no clarity at all. So far, there have been two documents circulated, and also Senator Ludwig, Senator Ludwig, before the previous procedural motion, was halfway through reading his motion. So we now have two written motions before the chamber, and a motion which was read halfway. So we now have three motions potentially before the chamber. Um, so just. Just wait. No, wait a minute. Senator Brown was on his feet before you. Well, I, I draw your uh, attention Sen to. Wait a minute, Senator Brown. You, you. When, when there's silence, Senator Brown will continue. Sen Sen Senator Brown, I draw your attention to. Standing Order 199, the motion that the question be now put is not open to debate or amendment and shall be, put, uh, and shall be forthwith put by the President and determined. The motion before the Chair is that the motion be put. Those are that are put. Wait a minute. Senator Cormann. On a point of order, like consistent advice that I have received from the clerk right from the day when I started is that at any one point of the procedure, an individual senator can seek leave and, and, and the chamber can uh, agree to give, to give leave or to deny leave. Uh, I ask you to put the question as to whether I have leave to take note of the information that you have provided to the Senate. Uh, so that I, I would ask you to put the question— Well, I understood that that's the, already been, been resolved. It hasn't. It hasn't been put. Well, is, is leave granted? Is leave— well, just, just wait. What? Senator Brandis, I'm not sure what your point of order now is, but we'll come back to that in a moment. The question is that the question be now put. That is the question before the chair. No, I'm not, I'm not entertaining that. The, I've, I've got to abide by the standing orders. The question is the question be now put. Those of that opinion say aye. The question is that the question be now put. That is the question. No. The question is that the question— This— Point of order. Mr President, Senator Cormann raised with you a point of order. You made some observations in relation to the point of order. Senator Cormann then, then sought leave to take note of your ruling. You said, I haven't made a ruling, I've merely provided information. I then moved, uh, took another point of order, and my point of order having been that regardless of whether or not you characterised what you said as providing information, you had disposed of Senator Cormann's point of order, and therefore that was a ruling, whether described as such or not. Se Se Senator I have not had a ruling on my point of order. Senator, Senator Brandis, um, I, have, I have ruled that there is a motion before the chair. The motion before the, motion before the chair is that the question be put in accordance with standing orders. 
I will be dispensing with that question that is before the chair. No, I don't have to entertain that. The question is that the motion. The question is. The question. The question is. The question. Yes, Senator Brandis. Order. Senator Brandis, I'm, I'm listening A to you. A senator may take seek leave to do anything at any time. If leave is refused, he may then move to suspend standing orders if he cho if he so chooses. Now, Mr. Now, Mr. President, Mr. President, you have given a ruling. You have given. I maintain you have given a ruling on Senator Cormann's point of order. But whether that be right or wrong, you have certainly given a ruling on my point of order. Senator Cormann is perfectly at liberty to seek leave to take note of your ruling on my point of order, which, as I understand, S is what. S now does, and the fact that he has done so is currently the question before the chair. Senator Brandis, there is no point of order. The question before the chair is that the motion be put. I will put Senator Ronald. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the scenario that's been put to you uh, by Senator Brandis and Senator Cormann is exactly the scenario upon which the Senate uh, went to two divisions uh, some ten minutes ago. The circumstances are exactly the same. There is no difference between the motion put by uh, pre um, uh, Senator Brandis and the matter put by Senator Cormann. Now, that is a completely inconsistent ruling if you are now refusing to take Senator Cormann's uh, uh, motion. The question, before the, chair, the question before the chair is quite clearly that the motion be put, which is a closure motion. It is a closure motion, not subject to further debate, and has to be put. And I will put the motion. Senator Brandis. Senator Cormann moved a motion. He moved a motion. You've ruled. I moved. Senator Cormann moved a motion, and that motion is now the question before the chair. No. That 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 question that question has not been accepted as being before the chair because I already have a question before the chair which is a closure motion that I need to put. Senator, Senator Cormann, this but is po point of order, Mr. President. I actually uh, also I moved a motion uh, that so much of standing orders be suspended. That is, standing orders be suspended, as would prevent me, as would prevent me from taking note of your ruling. Se Se so Senator we've got to deal with the motion, uh, my pro proposed motion to suspend standing orders. Senator Cormann, that is, that is not correct. Se Senator. Senator Bob Brown. Through all the gag motions moved through the Howard years and so on, I've never seen this process before. The uh, rule, as I read to you, 199, says that you. This says, is a point of order? Yes, it is. Says, and the point of order is that you will put this motion forthwith. All this is, disallow, is against the standing orders, President, and I ask you to abide by the standing Sen orders and put the Senator motion forthwith. Senator Brown, I will be putting the motion. You can. Take a point of order, Mr. President, Senator I direct your attention to Standing Order 197.3. A question of order or a matter of privilege so raised suspends the consideration and decision of every other question until determined. Now, Senator Cormann has raised a question of order. The moment he raised that question of order, that suspended the consideration of every other question, including Senator Ludwig's motion. There's no point of order. The question is that the motion, the motion be put. I think I, I move that the Senate take note of your no, question, the, you can't, Senator, Senator Brandis, I have an obligation to put the motion that the motion be put. Senator Brandis, Senator Brandis, that's what I. That's, that's what I will be doing. I will, I will be putting the closure motion. How, how, people, excuse me, how people deal with the matter after it has been put to the vote, then, then we, that's something for the, the uh, Senate itself to determine. Senator Betts. Very fine. May, uh, Mr. President, it uh, does seem that there is a lot of merit 
in Senator Brandis's point of order in relation to Standing Order 1973, which says that a question of order so raised suspends the consideration and decision of every other question until determined. There is no other way, with respect, Mr. President, that that can be read. That if there is a point of order raised, that that does need to be dealt with. And, uh, Mr. President, in those circumstances, I would be obliged if you would reconsider your ruling. There is, uh, as I said before, there is no point of order. My obligation is to put the motion that sees the closure. There are other other mechanisms that can be used in this debate if people wish to use it, but I have to put the motion. The motion is that the question be put. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be put. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. Point Senator McEwen, teller for the ayes. And Senator Adams, teller for the noes. Here we go. Order. There being 34 ayes, 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Uh, well, you need to work it out between you. Senator Abetz. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Understanding 195, could the clerk please read out the motion? Sorry? Uh, well, I, I can invoke the ruling of President Calvert on this matter, which uh, is simply that the motion, as I understand, has been circulated in the chamber, and Senator Calvert has the re re revised. Would you like to read it? Uh, we'll get the clerk to read it. Clerk. The motion before the chamber is as follows. It is headed, motion circulated in the chamber on 25 November 2010, revised. Well. The motion before the chamber is headed, revised, motion circulated in the chamber on 25 November 2010. And the motion is paragraph one. On Thursday, 25 November 2010, the hours of meeting shall be 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. 2. The Senate meet on Friday, 26 November 2010, and that the hours of meeting shall be 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. 3. The Telecommunications Legislation Amendment Competition and Consumer Safeguards Bill 2010 be called on immediately and have precedence over all other business until determined except at 2 p.m. on Thursday, 25 November 2010, questions without notice shall be asked for one hour. 4. The Telecommunications Legislation Amendment Competition and Consumer Safeguards Bill 2010 shall be considered under a limitation of debate. 5. The time allocated for the remaining stages of the bill shall be as follows. A. Committee of the Whole till 11.45 a.m. on Friday, 26 November 2010, B. All remaining stages till 12 noon on Friday, 26 November 2010. And C. This order operate as an allocation of time under Standing Order 142. 6. At the conclusion of the consideration of the business listed in paragraph 3, 
the order of business be? A. Tabling of a report of the selection of bills committee. B. Consideration of the following government business notices of motion. Number one, Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Jobs and Workplace Relations, Senator Evans. Introduction of the National Vocational Education and Training Regulator Bill 2010. Number two, Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Jobs and Workplace Relations, Senator Evans. Introduction of the National Vocational Education and Training Regulator Transitional Provisions Bill 2010. Number three, Minister for Innovation, Industry, Science and Research, Senator Carr. Exemption of bills from the provisions of Standing Order 111, paragraphs 5 to 8, concerning the consideration of legislation, being the Corporations Amendment Sons of Gwalia Bill 2010 and Financial Framework Legislation Amendment Bill 2010. Number five, Parliamentary Secretary for Sustainability and Urban Water, Senator Farrell, approval of works within the parliamentary zone, external expansion to the Abacus Child Care Centre at the Treasury Building and C, consideration of the following government business orders of the day. Number four, Airports Amendment Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Number five, Tax Laws Amendment Confidentiality of Taxpayer Information Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Number six, Radio Communications Amendment Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Number seven, Family Law Amendment Validation of Certain Parenting Orders and Other Measures Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Corporations Amendment Sons of Gwalia Bill 2010. Number eight, Health Insurance Amendment Pathology Requests Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Financial Framework Legislation Amendment Bill 2010. Number nine, Therapeutic Goods Amendment 2010 Measures Number One Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Number 10, Territories Law Reform Bill 2010, resumption of second reading debate. Paragraph seven, notices of motion may be lodged in writing on Friday 26 November 2010. Question is the motion moved by Senator, L Senator Betts. Point of order or seeking of clarification, Mr. President. Does that mean that this motion cannot be amended now that uh, we have passed those I procedural? I understand that the motion debate on the motion has closed and that the motion will now be put. And therefore, we won't be able to take note of answers later on today if this motion gets carried. And Senator Brown says correct. Question, I hope that's the question is that the motion Thank you very moved, much. The question is that the motion now, moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed. Senator. The question is the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. Appoint Senator McEwen, tell her for the ayes, and Senator Adams, tell her for the noes. Order. There being 37 ayes, 35 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Senator Brandis. Mr. President, I seek leave to move a motion to amend the revised order of business. Is leave granted? No. Leave is not granted. I move that so much of standing orders be suspended as would be, prevent me forthwith from moving a motion to amend the revised order of business. Mr. President, uh, Mr. President the revisions, uh, the, the order of business that has just been decided upon by the Senate uh, as a result of the uh, division uh, is now in effect the red for the next two days, uh, and the opposition may, uh, or any senator indeed, may amend the red. Um, the um, amendments that the opposition proposes are these. In paragraph um, three, there be. Um, added after the words question time today and a 30-minute debate for motions to take note of answers to questions, that, in sub, uh, that after subparagraph 2 there be added subparagraph 2 capital A, the Senate shall meet on Saturday the 27th of November 2010 and that the hours of meeting shall be 9am to 3.30pm. In subparagraph 5A, the words and phrase, uh, the words and expressions 11:45 a.m. be deleted, and the words and expressions 3:30 p.m. be inserted in their place. And in subparagraph 5B, uh, the words um, 12 noon on Friday, 26 November 2010 be omitted, and in substitution for them there be inserted the words 12 noon on Saturday, the 27th of November. 2010. Now, Mr. Deputy President, the opposition uh, embarks on this course with reluctance, but aware of the gravity of this situation. It is the consequence of the motion that the Senate has lately carried that, were the Senate to dispose of the business uh, uh, as is currently scheduled, then the Senate would not have the opportunity. 
for scrutiny of this legislation, appropriate scrutiny of this legislation. But before I before I come to that, before I come to that, we are entitled, we are entitled, Senator Evans, we are entitled, Senator Evans, to move whatever procedural motions are appropriate to protect the right of this Senate to have proper scrutiny of the largest expenditure of public works in Australian history. And 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 by and so it is Senator, the opposition. Senator, it is the opposition right. that is proposing that the Senate meet on Saturday. And it, an, extra, an extraordinary paying gotcha politics, One Senator year. Evans. It ill becomes you. That's Senator a lie, Conroy. Senator. Now, 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 let me take yes. Senator Conroy's. Senator let, Conroy. Let me take. Let Senator, me take. Let me take. Senator Sen Evans. Senator Evans. Let me right. take Senator Conroy's interjection, Mr. President, because last night on the Late Line program. Senator Conroy, either through ignorance or malice, I'm not sure, misled no, the Australian sorry. people. He claimed, he claimed that this bill has been on the Senate notice paper for one year, and that claim is, and that claim is, this, that claim, that claim is false. That claim is false. That the, 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 the bill, a, a bill of the same name as the bill currently before the Senate was on the Senate notice paper a year ago, but Senator Conroy, who, doesn't, uh, who makes a habit, as, as viewers of Sky News would be well aware, of not knowing what is in his own legislation, is uh, ignorant— Senator Conroy, that needs to be withdrawn. <coughs> I withdraw. Thank you. Senator Conroy, who, as viewers of Sky News would be aware, makes a habit of being ignorant of the content of his own legislation is unaware, evidently, that, that the bill that was on the notice paper a year ago, which bears the same name as the bill currently before the chamber, is entirely different. It was a different bill with the same name, not the same bill. Now, I think even a person of Senator Conroy's limited intelligence could understand that the fact that a bill bears the same name as an, an earlier bill does not make it the same bill. Senator Conroy is evidently entirely unaware of the fact that the claim he made on late line last night was false. So I, it, it, it seems that it's you know late line one, Sky News agenda one when it comes to exposing the ignorance of the minister. That having been said, that having been said, the opposition is determined to ensure that there is proper scrutiny of this legislation, and so we propose that the order of business be amended so that the Senate sits on Saturday and so that all of the time allowed for the sitting tomorrow, not just the time until noon, be allowed for de a deliberation of the Senate on this bill. Now, we know what the government's game is. The government's game is to, to, to conceal from, uh, from parliamentary scrutiny this legislation, just as they have concealed from parliamentary scrutiny time the business case. Senator Ludwig. Question now be put. Question is the motion now be put. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. no. I think the ayes have it. No, Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Ludwig be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair. The noes to the left of the chair. Point Senator McEwen. Tell her for the ayes. Senator Adams. Tell her for the no. Order. There being 37 ayes, 35 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. Senator Macdonald. Mr President, I seek leave to move a motion in relation to the hours of sitting, uh, which will in effect delete from paragraph 2 the words that the hours of meeting shall be 9am to 3pm. And to continue uh, and to include the words shall continue until such time as the bills listed in paragraph 6C are dealt with and determined. Look, um, is leave granted? Leave is not granted. Then, Mr. S uh, President, I, I uh, move that so much of standing orders uh, be set aside as would prevent me from uh, moving a motion in relation to uh, the hours of sitting, Mr. Uh, President, I, I hope the government might be listening to this because I am actually trying. Well, just just wait a minute. Just wait a minute, Senator McDonald. The clock's running. We we are we are considering Senator Brandis's motion. This is a motion which which uh, uh, I'm, is is on I, I is do, on the closure. I, I, uh, Mr. Uh, President, I seek your forgiveness on that of the Senate. I hadn't realised. I thought we'd disposed. No, no. Place. This was the motion. Right now, the question, the question is that the motion, the question, the question. Wait a minute. The question now is that the motion moved by Senator Brandis be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells. Four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The motion is the, uh, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Brandis be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair. The noes to the left of the chair. I point Senator Adams. Tell her for the ayes. Senator McEwen, tell her for the noes. Order. There being 35 ayes, 37 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Should I call them? Senator Macdonald. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I seek leave to move a motion in relation to the hours of sitting, which will uh, effectively uh, remove the words that the hours are in paragraph two that the hours of meeting shall be 9 a.m. to 3:30, and in lieu thereof to insert the words shall continue until such time as the bills listed in paragraph 6c are dealt with and determined. Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. Th then, Mr. President, I, I uh, move a motion that uh, so much of standing orders be set aside. S uh, Senator Macdonald, I will have to rule that uh, not in order. This is the second suspension of standing orders uh, to amend the order agreed to by the Senate. Such a motion is not in order. The rationale of this ruling is that once the Senate has been asked to suspend uh, standing orders to depart from the order of business on one such occasion and has declined to do so, the request should not be capable of being repeatedly made because this would provide a means of permanently obstructing the business of the Senate. And there, I, I am relying on a wide on a, on, on a wide range of precedent that has been cited on this matter. Well then, Mr President, I, move, I seek leave to move a motion that your ruling be noted. Is leave granted? No. Leave is not granted. Well then, Mr President, I move that so much of standing orders uh, uh, as would prevent me from moving the motion to take note of your answer be set aside. And Mr President, in, in moving that, can I simply add that the, this government is so hopeless and poorly managed that they don't understand 
that these bills listed in paragraph 6C, and I appreciate the Greens wouldn't know this because all they're interested in is any fraudulent uh, activity that might win them a vote or two in the Victorian elections. But I would have hoped that the government, I would have hoped that the, oh, is that a threat? Oh, I'm being threatened by the Greens. Heaven forbid. Oh, protect me, protect me, please, Mr. Chairman. The Greens are threatening me. I, I, I'm so, I'm so traumatised, Mr. President. I can barely get this out. But I was trying to say to uh, Senator Ludwig, we could get to the position where these motions listed at paragraph 6C, which we are told are very important, may not be voted on. And I particularly have an interest in the Territories Law Reform Bill, which is listed at the end. The opposition will be moving amendments in relation to that. Uh, a particular bill, but the way these standing orders stand at the moment, uh, we, are, we may well not even get to them. We may well not get to them. And I mean, people like Senator Carr keep yelling out. They, he has absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Senator Carr, if you opened your ears, you would understand that I'm actually uh, trying can, to facilitate. Can I suggest that debate across the chamber at this hour is not assisting anyone? You are entitled to put your point and be heard in silence, Senator Macdonald. Thank Senator you, Mr McDonald. President. Regrettably, some senior ministers on the other side are such buffheads that they do not understand—and do, I could name some if you want me to—do uh, uh, not understand that this important legislation that they tell us is important, but I know the Territories Law Reform Bill is important, and under the current standing orders which this government has so mismanaged this morning. Could well, it could well eventuate that we get to three o'clock tomorrow afternoon and we haven't dealt with the Territories Law Reform Bill. And that, and it, it doesn't make it, what I say now has nothing to do with the Territories Law Reform Bill because we don't get on to that, Senator Brown. If you'd only read the bills, the, the uh, motions that you've just supported after your what 23rd gag today, fancy that the Greens who are listed in pages of Hansards opposing the gags have for this time, and I certainly hope the uh, voters of Victoria understand this, because the Greens portray themselves, portray themselves as the upholders of the parliament and democratic institutions, and here they are, here they are against everything they have said for the last as long as they've been in parliament. Ever since they've been here, they've railed against gagging debate. And here they are 23 times this morning, 23 times, with the support of Senator Xenophon and Senator Fielding, tried to gag proper debate. And because they're not listening to my motion now, they're actually going to gag debate on the Airports Amendment Bill, on the Tax Laws Amendment Bill, on the Radio Communications Amendment Bill, bills that we can't start debating according to the motion that Senator Brown has just uh, uh, started, uh, just voted for, until 3:30 p.m. Uh, on, um, uh, on right. sorry, until noon on Friday. So what the Greens are effectively doing is, um, and the Labor Party, I might add, and the Independents are curtailing debate on the Airports Amendment Bill, on the Tax Laws Amendment, confidentiality of taxpayer information bill, the Radio Communications Amendment Bill, the Family Law Amendment Bill, the Corporations Amendment, the Health Insurance Amendment the uh, Therapeutic Goods Amendment and the one that I'm particularly interested in, the Territories Law Reform Bill, where the opposition will be moving a substantial number of amendments. Now, clearly, under the table of time that the government and the Greens have imposed upon us— I beg your pardon? Well, on, on the table of time that the Greens have imposed upon us, we're not going to actually get to be able to meet those— um, to, to, um, they're not non-contra, according to this. Where does it say non-contra? This is the red. Senator, this Senator is the red Seawick. Here. Senator Seawick. The red has been replaced by this series of uh, uh, agreements uh, that the Labor Party and the Greens have just posed, imposed upon the Senate. Uh, and, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President, those things have to be uh, dealt with. Even if you do, even if they are. Even if they are, uh, Senator Seward, non-controversial, 
they, there is no, unless you gag, are oh, you going to extend your gag on each of those bills, are you? Going to gag us all on those bills again. And uh, that's another indication of lack of proper scrutiny and debate on those six very important bills. We're obviously going to be Time gagged on them as well. Time has expired, Senator Evans. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Look, Mr. President, I, 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 speak, I speak to Senator Macdonald's uh, uh, motion to, uh, to make this uh, key point, Mr. President. Uh, the, the opposition have indicated that they oppose the bills before the chamber, the telecommunications bill. That's, that's accepted. That's perfectly, perfectly a legitimate position for them to take. Uh, they have argued that there would, there would be not be enough time to debate the bill properly under these arrangements. Can I indicate, Mr. President, that uh, we sought yesterday to provide an extra three hours of sitting to debate uh, this bill last night. The opposition, the opposition determined not to support that and therefore denied order, themselves order, three hours order, of the debate. Order. Senator Evans, just resume your seat. Senator Macdonald. On the matter of relevance, clearly the Leader of the Government and the Senate hasn't got a clue what the motion is. The motion didn't refer to the, the, the broadcasting bill, if I can call it that for brevity. It, re it refers to those other bills listed in paragraph 6C, and clearly the minister uh, is not being relevant to the motion before the There's chair. There's no point of order. Sen Sen Mr President, uh, we, we're in a situation where last night the opposition knocked back the opportunity to have three hours debate on the bill. We've now spent two and a half hours this morning. Two and a half hours this morning debating procedural matters which the opposition has sought to use to delay the Senate considering the bill. So we're now in a position where the Senate has actually wasted a potential five and a half hours to debate, to, to debate the telecommunications legislation uh, by, by virtue of the opposition's tactics. Now those tactics are open to them. That is a decision for them. But what the Senate and the Australian public have to understand is these are tactics designed to prevent debate on the legislation. Five and a half hours have already been lost for debate on the legislation. So when they, when they say they want to debate the legislation, they have already rejected the opportunity of debating it for another five and a half hours. And Mr. President, Mr. President the key point is this. Is that given that the Sen Sen guillotine motion Wait a has been carried? Senator Evans, uh, Senator Ronaldson. Uh, uh, I've just been watching the clock, Mr. President, and the clock has been uh, has been on four minutes nineteen for some uh, time now. I, I I haven't noted that, but I do take your point, Sen Senator Evans. I think the point of what is correct, Mr. President. But I don't intend going long, so uh, uh, I'll uh, stick within my five minutes uh, period. But, Mr. President, the key, the key point to make is this. The Senate is now in a position whereby every minute, every hour we debate procedural motions, there is less time available to debate the bill. The debate on the guillotine motion has been carried. The clock is now ticking. And what everyone needs to understand is the more procedural motions that are moved by the opposition merely eat up the time available to debate the bill. So their position Sen on this. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Senator Evans. Uh, Senator Joyce was on his feet before you, uh, Senator McDonald. Um, Mr. President, t and ticking very quickly. It went from 4:19, and the next thing it was about down to three. So. There's no point of order. That was an adjustment, Senate, Senate, That was an adjustment to accommodate uh, the error. Senator Evans. Now, Mr. President, uh, as I say, every minute now wasted on procedural motions takes time away from the time the Senate has to consider the bill. So the opposition have to make a decision, Mr President. Are they seriously interested Thanks. in debating the bill, or are they interested in wrecking and preventing the Senate considering the bill? That's where they are now. It's perfectly appropriate for them to oppose on procedural grounds the motions that we've moved. We've had those debates. We've had them at length. But where we are now is at a situation where the more we debate procedural motions, the less time there is for scrutiny of the bill, and it's on the heads of the opposition as to whether, whether they choose to use the time now to scrutinise the bill, and we've got the rest of today and we've got all day tomorrow under the motion carried by the Senate. It's a decision for the opposition now as to whether they use that time for consideration of the bill or they use it for procedural purposes. So, uh, uh, so, uh, order. Uh, uh, just resume your seat for a moment. Um, Senator Macdonald. Mr President, I again raise the order that the Leader of the Government in the Senate cannot understand 
that the motion that we're talking about, was, which was taking note of your ruling on, on my motion about giving time to debate, not the NBN bill, but all of those others. And clearly, Senator Evans hasn't got a clue, and he is not relevant to the motion before the Thank chair. You. There's no point of no point of order, Senator Evans. Mr. Mr. President, I'm trying yeah. to deal with the legislative program in the time remaining for the Senate. And the key point, as I say, is this: it is on the heads of the opposition as to how we use the available time now. And if Senator Macdonald and others are not reined in by the leadership of the Liberal Party, that's the decision for them. But the bottom line is, the Senate now has a timetable. And how we use that time is determined by the senators here, and they can choose to use it on procedural matters, or they can choose to use it debating the bill. I suggest we get on and debate the bill, Mr. President. And on that, on that basis, I move that the question now be put. Senator Ferguson. Uh, point of order, Mr. President. I think it was only yesterday that if Senator Evans was here, he would have realised that you ruled that someone who has spoken in a debate cannot move that the motion be put. It doesn't apply to a minister. The question is that the motion be question is that the motion be put. Those that opinion say aye. Against say no. The ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells four minutes.
Lock the doors. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be put. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. Point Senator McEwen, teller for the ayes, and Senator Bushby, teller for the noes. Order. There being 36 ayes, 34 noes, the matter is resolved in the affirmative. The question, the question now is that the motion uh, moved by Senator Macdonald be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. Someone left the, someone left the chamber.
Lock the doors, lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Macdonald be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left of the chair. Point Senator Bushby teller for the ayes, Senator McEwen teller for the noes. Order. There being 34 ayes, 36 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Clerk. Government Business Order for Day Number 1, Telecommunications Thank Legislation you. Amendment Competition and Consumer Safeguards Bill 2010 in Committee.